pain comes from resistance. Resistance of what you are and what you must do, deal with, feel, accept, embrace. And if you don't, you get pain. And what happens if you get pain? You distract yourself with other things and you forget about the pain. But then you get back into it. But you hit the pain again. Pain is a resistance. Any pain you get, say you get a headache, okay? You're sitting there and then you feel a headache and what do you usually do with the headache you go ah oh, got a bloody headache you might take a pill you might drink a glass of water you might go for some fresh air to clear this headache because you see it as a problem and you look for a solution Now maybe you've got a headache because the air is too stuffy or you haven't drunk enough water. But let's just say meditation pain, okay? And you get meditation pain even when you're not meditating. You might be waiting for a bus, you might be sitting there watching the TV. Right. Meditation pain. I had this pain on the soles of my feet. I could meditate for an hour and a half, an hour, two hours, ten minutes, depends, depended. And then I'd hit this pain on my feet, this burning, searing pain. A few times I had to look down and check, was I on fire? <laughs> it took me a while to realize what this pain was being caused by and it was a, again a resistance as they all are this particular pain was a resistance of my the feelings from my soulmate as I was meditating now you see what I do is I sit and meditate and I love every feeling sensation that I get because I understand that is how I be with love by loving what's coming now when I've been having pain and it's a resistance and I'm kind of blocked I'm stagnant I can't move on from this stage to the next stage because of this pain that I'm not dealing with you see the further away it is from your core the more intense the pain will be so I learned that I could once I realized that this pain was for me and it wasn't meant as pain it was only being pain because I was resisting it and keeping it on the extremities once I allowed it in further say to my tummy it was still a kind of pain, but certainly not as intense and searing as it was on the soles of my feet. It was more of a pressure, a slightly uncomfortable pressure. And then as I was able to bring it further still towards my core, loving it, accepting it, wanting to know it, suddenly, or it's not something you can kind of force it's um, in a way a, a point where you let go in a sense and it flows and it flows through the core and it can go up and round and it can do a million different things but then you've actually accomplished something you've actually processed something you've actually moved on from that stagnation And so it is a very simple to say thing to say that pain is caused by a resistance of something. 
So if you have a pain and you're trying to deal with it, or when you meditate you get a pain, listen to what I've just said and you will be able to move on. Let's talk about the future. Why are we so obsessed with what the future looks like? Well, we like to know what things look like, don't we? But often, if, there, if there's a film or something about the future, obviously film is a visual art, but we're looking into the future and we're thinking, what are humans going to be wearing? What are we going to be traveling in, you know? And um, what will be the order of things? So how will the society operate? And, you know, this isn't surprising why we should wonder at these things. Um, if we look into the past, we can see that the clothes we were wearing were different, the things we were traveling in were different, and the order of things have been different. And those three things and more, and what we drink and eat and all the rest of it, they change and develop and what's, what's, right? But we kind of, in the last hundred years or so, we've kind of been trapped in this, rather than uh, uh, evolving as people, we've, we've kind of depended on technology to evolve. And we've kind of felt that is, in a sense, us evolving. And to some extent it is. Um, the amount of knowledge we can now process uh, through watching a film or playing a game is much more than we could have done from um, reading a book because just the the bandwidth of information that you can take in is so much greater and it's greater now than when I was a child when I was a child you could put the telly on uh, you'd have a couple of channels and they might not even be uh, broadcasting all day or you could watch a film that you'd probably watched about 20 times already. Whereas children now, they can go on the internet, they can absolutely get anything whatsoever. And yes, they are being steered by, uh, you know, whatever. But it's available. They can go and find out whatever they need to know. So the bandwidth of information that you can pull in is more. But that in itself doesn't make you more evolved. It probably gives you more capacity for knowledge absor absorption <laughs> and that's a type of involvement I guess and then but it's what you do with that afterwards which is the important thing so we've kind of been relying on technology and if you've been listening to my videos before you'll probably have heard me said say something like you know technology is kind of hit its peak, uh, science was, was going on and up and up and up until the electrons weren't doing what they expected them to do and they, they really hit a, a massive um, obstruction in the sense that we exist on more than just this dimension, we go to sleep and we dream, we're in another dimension. Now there's no machine you can build, physical machine you can build that can access that other dimension. We, on the other hand, machines, we can. So that's why I'd say technology has hit a bit of a barrier on that front. So, you know, if we want to progress, we have to progress ourselves. And the best bit of advice that anyone can give anyone is the kingdom is within you look within you why are we always looking outwards to see what's outside there's a whole load of things within focus your attention within yourself what's going on in there and this is where we come back to pain because for a lot of older people 
they experience pain there because there's resistance in the things they ought to be feeling. Younger people perhaps have more of a chance because they haven't uh, built up resistance so much already. <clears throat> so when we look to the future, perhaps we should be thinking more about what are we going to be feeling in the future rather than what things are going to look like. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to go and take a look in a bit over on the computer at the protocols of the elders of Zion a few bits I've highlighted that shows us it's happening you know this thing was written in the 1800s at some point they say it was the Bolshevik plan but these things are really happening in the world and they're pretty darn obvious so whoever wrote that over uh, 150 years ago or whatever certainly had some insight as to what's been going on now which is quite extraordinary really I don't think they claim to be a prophet but what they are saying is that they plan these things to happen and it's just part of their agenda but let's let's just let's just take a look at how the enemies to this how they are treated um we see them uh what's the word when they point you know point someone out we see them highlighted in the press boom point your fingers at this person everybody I like this person. Let me tell you what they're doing. They're bombing their own people, or they hate Jews, or they bully the civil servants. And they'll be ganged up on. They'll be ganged up on by the opposition, because everybody's got opposition. They'll be ganged up on by the media, because the media are fully in the pockets of these uh, elite. And it'll be just constant pressure, gang up, gang up, gang up, unrelenting until that person that they're pointing out is uh, totally ruined and off the scene. We've got Jeremy Corbyn, right? What's he ever done wrong? He doesn't want war. He wants to stop spending money on missiles. He thinks they're pointless. And a lot of people agree. Why can't the UK take a lead and just say, fine, we're not spending any money on defence anymore. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we do get attacked. Let's try. Okay, a lot of people think that's really stupid, right? But <laughs> the alternative seems pretty stupid to me. Keep spending money on weapons that you're never going to use because they're far too destructive and space wars and all that I mean god that's a new one I have to do that one another day so Jeremy Corbyn is a is a good guy basically yet he's been made out to be this horrible evil person who won't talk about anti-semitism and da 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 Oh, so terrible, isn't it? Oh, and we've got well, we know Bashar al-Assad. Remember him? I mean, how he was persecuted. And then we got Pretty Patel in the news, Home Office Secretary, bullying the civil servants. Well, I just put a message up on Facebook saying. I spoke to an old wise man the other day, who knows things, and I said, who's got the real power in Banbury, you know, who really decides what happens? And he says, there's about four people in the district council, civil servants, they have all the power. So what about the elected representatives? He said, they haven't got a clue. You know, this is the world we live in. 
Those people who lurk behind the corridors, and they're the ones with their fingers on the power. And if they don't like the minister, they can gang up against them, call them bullies, do whatever. Well, basically, Pretty Patel might have been getting cross at them because they don't bloody carry out the what they're being asked to do. They drag their feet when they're told to do something they don't want to do. They have an agenda. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. For laziness reasons, I'm going to stay in this chair. And we'll look at this first. And then we'll go and look at that. That. Right. We're looking at Proverbs. I uh, did a video back in 2019. Not Proverbs. Psalms. I want. Um, you know, how Psalms are supposed to, uh, according to the Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, Psalm number 2 was about the year 1902. Psalm 40 was about the year 1940. Psalm 119 is about the year 2019. That is the longest chapter in the Bible. Well, we read that before. And at the beginning of 2020, we read Psalms 120. Let's read it again now. I called to the Lord in my distress, and he answered me. O Lord, I cried, save me from lying lips and from the tongue of slander. What has he in store for you, slanderous tongue? It's what we hear, isn't it? Slander, 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 accusations, allegations, allegations. And then the press will go, all these serious allegations have been made against you. What are you going to do about it? Blah, 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 blah. What more has he for you? Nothing but a warrior's sharp arrows or red-hot charcoal. Hard is my lot, exiled in Meshech, dwelling by the tents of Kedar. All the time that I dwelt among men who hated peace, I sought peace. But whenever I spoke of it, they were for war. Well, I mean, quite a lot of that seems to sum up year 2020. But anyway, I mean, I'm sure we could, uh, exiled in Meshek, we could probably look up that and tie in some sort of thing to do with this lockdown and dwelling by the tents of Kedar, and we could probably look into that as well. But <laughs> Right. Let's have a look for next year. Psalms 121. If I lift up my eyes to the hills, where shall I find help? Help comes only from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. How could he let your foot stumble? How could he, your guardian, sleep? The guardian of Israel never slumbers, never sleeps. The Lord is your guardian, your defence at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard against all evil. He will guard you, body and soul. The Lord will guard your going, your coming, now and forevermore. So that sounds good. But the only place you're going to get help from is God. Seek God with your heart. It's your, it's your parent. It's quite an easy feeling. And I had a I had a quick glance at 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128. It's all good. Well, it's kind of good. 120, well, so 128 is called Long Life and Prosperity. That sounds good. 129 is called Prayer Against Zion's Enemies. So you could indicate from that that um, after 128 there's going to be some more attack. And interestingly, it does start to talk about Zion. 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but stands fast forever. 
As the hills enfold Jerusalem, so the Lord enfolds his people now and evermore. It goes on, but I won't read it on. you got a Bible, you can read it. So it does start talking about Mount Zion. And what are we expecting in this time from the Revelation recoded? Is we are expecting the Mount Zion. Uh, the 144,000 standing on Mount Zion. But before that, I think we've got the mark of the beast. You know, as if that isn't happening. Okay, so we're going to go over to the other computer and have a little look at... <coughs> we're going to have a look at... the... Internet. Give me this one. Come on. There we go. Display capture. Display capture. Sorry. Um, 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 um. All right, internet. Give me some internet. <laughs> God has instituted in the life so of this, the Jew is that he has dispersed him all uh, This video will get blocked. Um, I tried searching it yesterday. There were loads of um, loads of warnings about this isn't allowed in your country. So just have a look at these comments that I've done here. Right. Begins proper at 1846. 106 ish. Oh, I did some before that. 33 35. International rights will outweigh national rights. So, this is part of their um, part of their plans. So, obviously, with the new international world agenda, world. which possesses millions of eyes ever on the watch and unhampered by any limitations whatsoever. Our international rights will then wipe out national rights in the proper sense of right and will rule the nations precisely as the civil law of states rules the relations of the subjects among themselves. Okay. Then we've got um, 5210 new laws to remove the old liberal laws. So what they're saying is, you know, they get they allow all this liberalism, right, to the point to the point of the detriment of us, you know, like, just way too liberal. And th then they're going to claw them back. In order to grip in our hands all the forces of the community, we shall regulate mechanically all the actions of the political life of our subjects by new laws. These laws will withdraw one by one all the indulgences and liberties which have been permitted by the Goyim, and our kingdom will be distinguished by a despotism of such magnificent proportions as to be at any moment and in every place in a position to wipe out any Goyim who oppose us by deed or word. So Goyim are non-Jews. And these, these Jews aren't the, the... I mean, they are... some of them are Jewish, but these are Zionists, yeah? And... After listening to this full video, um, I, I thought back to I'll show you a uh, video I made back with the Ultra Nepets um, about how there are two wicked forces in the world, if you like. There's like there's two big enemies to uh, normal people, um, <clears throat> and that is um, you know one side you've got like. Uh, the Catholic Church and their type of evil. Which one? This one. And you've also got the um, synagogues of Satan, right? Which so if you look at the the revelations, uh, the synagogue of Satan and the Nicolaitans are mentioned. So the Nicolaitans are the Catholic. Jesuits, right, so the sort of things they do is horrible, disgusting. They would abuse children, they flog themselves, they're into blood, right, and spirit cooking and, and that sort of shit. Whereas the, um, the Zionists, right, they are 
they're more into the deception and lying and trickery and and using backdoor methods to control and stay in the shadows you know what i mean right and so so the the the, the nicolaitans the jesuits and that they don't want to wipe us all out because um where would they have their fun but the 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 others the synagogue of satan they would quite like to wipe most of the population out so that there only remains a a, a fair amount of number that you can live on the earth pleasantly with their new ways but the synagogue of satan if you if you read on about them they um they say that uh you know they're waiting for a for their king so i don't know if they've selected their king or they you know whether they believe that i think they believe they're right um because quite near the beginning they sort of say uh, they need to do this wickedness in order to to get to the the goodness so in a sense they want a good world but they lack the imagination uh, in, in order to get there via righteous means so they lack the imagination to do it that way so they think they have to resort to wicked nefarious ways in order to get to the good place uh, now, which one will be the repentant thief? I don't know. The Pope and the Jesuits or, or the false Jews? Um, which ones will be the repentant thief? I guess we won't know until near the end. But for some reason, I guessed it was going to be the, the false Jews. Anyway. So, so that's what I... So, so, I, so I sort of saw that, that sort of confirmed that they are like the synagogue of, of Satan. Uh... 5924 will establish huge monopolies Google Amazon Uber etc so this you know this shows us that we are we are how could they have predicted this like 150 years ago whenever it was written anarchism and drunkenness secret meaning of the propaganda of economic theories we shall soon begin to establish huge monopolies, reservoirs of colossal riches, upon which even large fortunes of the Goyim will depend to such an extent that they will go to the bottom together with the credit of the states on the day after the political smash. You gentlemen here present who are economists, just strike an estimate of the significance of this combination. No, I'm not an Special economist. schools. Anyway, you heard it. These persons will have cognizance of all the secrets of the social structure, they will know all the languages that can be made up by political alphabets and words, they will be made acquainted with the whole underside of human nature, with all its sensitive chords on which they will have to play. These chords are the cast of mind of the goyim, their tendencies, shortcomings, vices and qualities, the particularities of classes and conditions. Needless to say that the so they think, you know, most Goyim are dickheads, which, um, you know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, then, you know, I do point out some of the dickhead behaviour that <laughs> we do take part in. and But I also, you know, give the reasons for that. So I also do do that. But anyway, so, um, like, if you... So 121, they select leaders from the dark with the dark past so that they can control them. We've seen this happen so often. Jeffrey Epstein may well be in the circle, and I mean he may be one of the recruiters, you know, and what one of the ones gathering information on people so that they have the power to do thin if there should arise a deadlock from the impossibility of finding presidents, a deadlock which will finally disorganize the country. In order that our scheme may produce this result, we shall arrange elections in favor of such presidents as have in their past some dark, undiscovered stain, some Panama or other, then they will be trustworthy agents for the accomplishment of our plans out of fear of revelations and from the natural desire of everyone who has attained power, namely, the retention of the privileges, advantages and honor connected with the office of president. So, you know, I think Trump got in by surprise. And they clearly wanted him out because they haven't let up from the very get-go. I believe it was 19 minutes after he became president-elect. They started the impeachment things. And don't we see, you know, it's all 
back door behind room sort of stuff going on and collaboration and they've been trying to get rid of him they you know no i don't think they expected him to win after they had that recording of him saying i like to grab women by the pussy right i just didn't think nobody thought he was going to win after that right but he did right and he did a lot of good for the country and he sorted out a lot of their deals and Changed a lot of things, right? And they clearly want him out. And Biden's their man, you know? I mean, he's got such a dark past. He's basically a puppet on a string for them, right? So it is so obvious. And here in this uh, video and this pamphlet, which I read back in 2005, at the time of reading it, I couldn't quite believe it, but I was, do you know what I mean? But 15 years later, and it's undoubtedly happening. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Right. So what are we doing? Why am I dressed up <laughs> like this, eh? Why? Um, mum, mum, mum. I don't think. I don't think I've got anything more to add. Particularly. What do you think of my, uh, look at this, look at it. space saving thing here, pretty good isn't it, do you think it will fall down, I'm very proud of that stick you see, I, I, three sticks, join them together with homemade dowels, love it, and it's, um, I mean I say it's solid, it's solid-ish, <laughs> hasn't fallen down yet, <clears throat> Hey. Well, well then. Now then. We are the most amazing things on this planet. And we didn't make ourselves. <laughs> Did we? Something made us something more intelligent, something amazing, enormous. You know, the universe is so huge, isn't it? I mean, even if you didn't know what all those pinpricks of light were in the night sky, the world is huge. It's amazing. We're amazing. And something made all this. We didn't make it. And that thing actually cares. And what we're seeing now in the world with all this not nice stuff is we are seeing examples of how not to do it. Uh, these organizations, Catholic Church, false Jews, whatever, they take on a responsibility without really uh, checking with the boss, you know? And, uh, and the boss allows them to do it so that they can learn from the error and we can all see and also learn from how not to do it. And because probably it's a bit too simple. The thing is, the answers are so simple. Like, this is what problem I have is how to extrapolate on um, pain is caused by resistance or love is the answer. You know, how do you to extrapolate on that isn't so easy. It's probably easier to see it go wrong. And in our own lives, how do we learn anything? We make the mistake. Then we really feel it. I'm not going to do that again because of the feeling of having done something wrong. Stops you, makes you remember. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Okay. Good place to end, I think. Ciao.